Focus on your strengths and not your weaknesses is what they all say. But what do I think about that? You're about to find out. Here's the deal. Weaknesses are not fun in life, but they're particularly painful in business. Michael, you haven't even heard I'll never accept their first offer. What is your second offer? Whether you're struggling with understanding your numbers. Our prices are the only thing keeping us in business. They're actually putting you out of business. You're struggling to know how to market or even struggling to close deals. It can be a really annoying, painful experience. And I know that you're here because you want to create the right strategy to be able to balance out your success and know how to succeed with your strengths and your weaknesses. So stick with me and by the end of this video, you'll know your strengths and weaknesses and how they're affecting your business, what you should and should not be spending your time on, and also what is your zone of genius that gives you the most potential for earning in your business. So you know, the gurus of the world talk a lot of So what the do I think about this one? This is a Michael moment, and I'm about to tell you why, but before I do, I'm Amy Walker, small business strategist, and welcome to my channel. If you are new, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you can get notified every time we release new content. I'm not superstitious, but I'm, I am a little stitious. Michael moments. I mean, I'm a little stitious on this one. Like, it's true. I just don't think it's the full picture true. There is truth in it, but I think we need a little bit more depth. When I was, uh, I've been on both sides of this coin. When I was at a certain phase in my business, I was like, I'm only gonna focus on my strengths. I'm gonna do all the things that I'm great at. I'm gonna let that be where I dedicate my time. But I wasn't really paying attention to my weaknesses. They weren't managed and business was chaotic and it was messy. Four years right. of malfeasance unreported this okay, can Okay, calm down. No, Just you calm down. Who said is Toby on? Who said are you on? Hey, him hey, or me. Doc because my weakness is in, my strength is in vision and creating a strong strategy and a strong plan, but my weakness is in making sure that all of the little details are taken care of. So it was messy and it was chaotic and it was hard to sustain. There was another season in my business where I was really focused on like, no, we're going to make sure that we have all the details managed and all the details in place and we're gonna be so tight with our systems and our processes. I've outlined the exact parameters in an email, so check your spam folders, but basically, you do your job better, you get points. And I was working from so much discipline that I was really losing the joy and the excitement and being in a space of strategy and vision and creation. And so where I have found the best success is when I follow a formula that I am about to share with you that really balances out my strengths and my weaknesses. So let's talk about this strategy. The first thing we're going to do is we're gonna build the business around your strengths. Why in the world would we build a business around your weaknesses? Let's take all the things that you're bad at and let's put them together and we're gonna make a salad of crap and that will be your business. Honestly, it is unlikely that I was gonna figure this out anyway. <laughs> That doesn't even make sense, you guys. We need to figure out what are you great at? When I started my business, I remember this conversation with my husband. I was like, I'm good at three things. I'm good at sales, um, I'm good at speaking, and I'm good at coaching people. I'm not good at anything else, but I am good at those three things. So guess what we built our business around? Those three things. Everything that we did, whether it was our marketing or how we were converting clients, we were focusing on those three things all of the time and that helped us to be able to create quick results because the whole business was focused around what is Amy good at. The second thing in this formula though is understanding that your weaknesses can damage your business. If you are only focusing on your strengths, I mean, that's great for personal development and self-esteem, but in your business, your weaknesses can actually damage your business. Can anyone think of examples of things that are over the line time wasters? This meeting. <laughs> so maybe you have a weakness of um, you over give all the time. And so you can't handle a lot of clients because you're over giving to everyone. Well, that can damage your business. It will limit your potential growth. Maybe you have a weakness of um, you're disorganized. Maybe you have a weakness of you're terrible at sales. I mean, 
that was my weakness at one point in my business. I had to really work on that one. Um, but whatever that weakness is, you need to be aware of it and understand what the weaknesses are so that you can mitigate the damage and kind of contain that weakness. So that is going to prepare you to move into step number three, which is who. Who can do the things that you're bad at? Let's see Josh replace these people. Let's see Josh find another Stanley. You think Stanley's grow on trees? Well, they don't. Okay, if, if, like if it was sales, who can sell for you? Um, if it is marketing, who can market for you? If it is uh, managing all of the details of the business, like the little small things that I miss, who can do that for you? You need to have somebody in place that can manage those things because they cannot be ignored. When they're ignored is when they damage the business. When they're attended to, you get to stay in your strengths and have somebody else managing the things that you're bad at. Now, this is gonna lead you to a question that you might be asking, if you're not, you should be, which is I mentioned that I was really bad at sales at one point in my business, and then it got to the point where it was one of my three things that I was really good at. So how do you find the line between saying, that's just not my skill, and it's never going to be, and I need to develop that skill in order to be successful? So. First of all, I believe that you should learn enough about everything in your business to be informed and aware. It doesn't mean you need to learn enough about everything in your business to be the one who does it, but you should understand it. Because if there is an area of your business that you truly don't understand, that's scary. You will pay the ignorance tax. You know what the ignorance tax is, right? Like you didn't know any better and so it cost you a lot. You made mistakes. Five mistakes in less than a day? We did our best. No, you didn't, Phyllis. So I don't wanna pay the ignorance tax, so I learn enough about every area of my business to be informed, but I do not require myself to learn enough to be the one who does it. Now, the other thing that I look at there is, you know, where are the, the highest value places for me to put my time? And how long is it gonna take me in terms of learning in order to be successful? So when I was really bad at sales and I looked at what's the highest value skills that I can learn, it was sales. So I invested in the skill of learning sales. It didn't take me that long. Like once I finally got into a training program where someone's gonna teach me how to sell, it didn't take me that long before I could start seeing a difference immediately. So that was very worthwhile. Um, when I learned about marketing strategy and implementation, that was another thing where I studied marketing for about a year um, and you know, within the course of a few months, I was generating leads for my business. So it didn't take a long time to learn, but it brought things in. If I was going to say learn website design, okay, it's so far outside of the way that my brain thinks. I'm not technical, I get easily overwhelmed and frustrated, and it's not really going to produce me a lot of results. It appears that the website has become alive. This happens to computers and robots sometimes. So I decide not to do that, but I know enough about websites to understand if mine is performing well, or if the web developer is ripping me off, or if they're telling me something can't be done, but I know that it can. I learn enough about it to be informed, but not requiring myself to learn so much that I have to be the one who does everything. The fifth tip that I have for you is actually from a book called The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. I love this book, and what he talks about in here is that you have four different zones. You have your zone of incompetence, no way. Your zone of competence, I can manage. Your zone of excellence, I got this. And your zone of genius, this is my jam. Your zone of incompetence are the things that like, you're just bad at, okay? So web design, bad at. Um, doing a bookkeeping, bad at. Um, being the producer of any of our events, I'm bad at, like it's, it's so far against the nature of my skills that it's going to be a complete mismatch. I only invest time and energy in learning what should be done, but I do not spend any time and energy developing those skills to the point where I would do those. I just let those go. I'm fine, leave me alone. 
The second are things that are in your zone of competence, meaning you can do it, but anybody else could do it as good as you or maybe even better. For me, that would be like graphic design. Like I can go and create the graphics, um, but why would I when like I'm just okay, I'm all right, but I'm not amazing. But hey, Jim. Yeah. I won an art contest today. No yeah. way. All right, Pam, congratulations. <laughs> So those are ones that you want to also let go of. Now the place where most people get stuck is actually in their zone of excellence. These are things that you're really quite good at. Sales is one. Because I am good at sales, that's the hardest place for me to get out of in my business. I'm really good at it. Um, marketing strategy is another one. I'm really good at that. I'm really creative with that. And so this is what tends to limit our growth because we're so focused on these things that we are really good at but they keep us from our zone of genius. And the zone of genius is the most challenging one to identify because this is the thing you were born to do. This is the thing that when it comes right down to it, you do this in a unique and genius way that nobody else can do it just like you. This is your gift. This is like, this is the thing. This is the magic. This is like, I call it the Amy magic or whatever you, your name is, it's your magic. Um, and this is the thing that you were really born to do. So when I look at this, and I, you guys, I've struggled with this, like, what's my zone of genius? Who am I? I believe that my zone of genius is to take, it's strategy. It's to take all of the information that people are telling me, and then my brain naturally organizes it into a way that makes sense and a process that seems very simple to follow. Doesn't always mean it's easy to execute, but it's simple to follow. So I can take chaos and I can pop it through my brain and it comes out into order. That's my zone of genius. The more that I stay in that space, the better off it is for my company. The more that I get sucked into those other zones, the more that it's going to limit our growth. So let's review here. Five things that I want you to do as you're figuring out how to balance your strengths and weaknesses. Number one, I want you to build your business around your strengths. Number two, I want you to understand that your weaknesses can damage your business if left unchecked. Number three, who is going to do the things that are your weaknesses? Number four, I want you to analyze how long it's going to take you to develop a skill and which ones you should develop and which ones you should just understand. And then five, I want you to actually map out your zone of incompetence, your zone of competence, all the things that you're doing, your zone of excellence and your zone of genius so that you can really truly know where to focus your time and energy to make the most money. And while you're at it, if you wanna go get the book, The Big Leap, like go for it, it's great. Tell Gay I sent you. He has no idea who I am, but maybe if enough people say it, he will. All right, my friends, so here is the truth, okay? The truth is that you need to be honest about your strengths and your weaknesses. Like gut level honest about what you are great at and what you are not great at. And then you want to make sure that you have a plan in place for your weaknesses and then you get to stay in your strength. If you wanna learn more about successful goal setting, then go ahead and click over to our 10 Steps to Successful Goal Setting video. So like I said at the beginning, I'm not superstitious, I'm just a little stitious on this one because yes, you should focus on your strengths, but if you don't have a plan for your weaknesses, I think you're really leaving your business in a very vulnerable spot. If you need help on your sales and marketing, I encourage you to go get our sales and marketing GPS. It's an assessment that you can take that we will then send you an eight page improvement plan for what you can do to grow your sales and marketing. Also, if you're looking for a community of like-minded entrepreneurs, head on over to our private Facebook group, Acquire, and you can ask questions and engage with some really cool people. If you are new to the channel and you haven't done it already, like, subscribe, leave us a comment, hit the bell, do all of the things because we cannot wait to have you back again. All right, my friends, I hate to see you go, but I love to watch you leave because that's when you get to go and implement. Mm -hmm.